does blockchain really solves uh, some of the promise of uh, backend efficiencies uh, uh, which comes with it. Talk to me about the asset tokenization because you know a lot of people have talked about this for a long time. I first when I first got into the space, I thought this is where it's going to go. It's not got there yet, but it's getting there. How how are you seeing that space develop? So if you do a table and you think about fixed value and variable value, and you put all the possible uh, on on your on your on your left side of the table uh, from uh, from uh, tokenizing uh, currencies to tokenizing assets, and uh, look at uh, look at what instrument is is helping that whole process i think there is this there is this trend uh, where we can see that the focus on privately issued payment token definitely will see a huge pause but when there is an effort to tokenize a reference ownership of an asset or natively issuing an asset on the blockchain network like a token those two bucket which has got that uh, variable value uh, will see a progress because that's the only one which doesn't impact monetary policy it doesn't impact uh, fina- existing financial system uh, the only impact it has is making the existing asset ownership more efficient and the payment uh, process which goes with that more efficient i think that safe boundaries of those two asset class does allow the the the, the all the technologists working in the space to narrow down and focus on that so by virtue of that that safe the safe space i see that's moving that kind of moving forward with the technology we have today because people will step out uh, of uh, the, the 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 payment instrument part of the asset tokenization, they will shift to this reference uh, reference ownership asset uh, experiments or or even deployment. Now that lives that lives on the payment side, the CBDCs, uh, which we'll talk about, I guess, in our discussion. But I'm going to keep it separate. Exactly right. The settlement layer. I think the CBDCs. I know this is probably contentious. Is probably a better way of doing it because it's the government on ramp and off ramp and they feel comfortable with monetary policy and the control over that element yeah. and then everything else well, you know what you can use blockchain for gets interesting um i i have a feeling that i'm i'm very closely watching nfts mm. and not in the you know art collecting or community space but the fact that this is a contract mm. that is recorded transferable and that there are many use cases that even, you know, in your kind of remit of fintech, that it feels that things like insurance contracts, mm. derivative contracts, and others mm. fit mm. well into that technology. Again, that's outside of the, the, the currency element, but mm. just an efficient way of recording, transferring. How are you thinking of NFTs? Or you just throw it all in as part of the same thing? NFT is for me NFT, um, which which is which is the second bucket of that asset ownership, which is the natively issued tokens. Uh, uh, it's almost like uh, a company is issuing uh, equity directly into the blockchain network, and that piece of uh, code represents that asset ownership. So it has been kind of diluted by this whole um, uh, art collective collectibles and all this thing in the network. But assuming that piece of technology is now becoming, or in future will become a way people will uh, issue ownership uh, on their assets, uh, definitely it is promising. Uh, what we got to see whether by virtue of issuing on the network, does it make that whole process of ownership and transfer and settlement super efficient? Uh, on on face of it, it looks yes. Uh, why not? Because the NFTs, at least from a tech stack perspective, seems to be efficient. Uh, you can buy and settle and, and 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 exchange NFTs super efficiently today on existing um, apps. So, uh, what can we do uh, to move that uh, 
that tech, piece of technology and piece of process uh, to financial instrument. Uh, so that's that's what I meant by the second bucket was actually in a way you can say NFTs uh, in in current form. The the issue which I think we got to answer that uh, is uh, can existing payment infrastructure uh, uh, still interact with this NFT world, which lives and operates on the DLT network as a mechanism for settling payment on when you transfer NFT from A to B. Now, do you need a native uh, uh, coin of that network to facilitate this transfer of assets on the network? Now, uh, some of the answer uh, we, people are thinking about Will, will CBDC form that role or a stable coin, let's say from so-called stable coin to well-regulated stable coin, will that uh, be the preferred financial instrument or payment instrument which will facilitate such network uh, uh, on that network for, for transferring the asset? So I think that's still a work in progress, but definitely at this point in time, I can say with all uh, certainty, the role of privately issued uh, uh, money is close to zero, uh, at least from a public policy perspective. When you talk uh, about privately, like private private money, money to stable yeah, coin. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I still believe stable coin is somewhere in cusp of being a regulated uh, money, uh, which happens, which backed by well-regulated assets uh, sitting in some custody or some assets, some trust bank. I'm, I'm keeping stable coin away from the pure Bitcoin uh, money. Uh, but the role of the Bitcoin type money being used to uh, buy and sell uh, such asset um, is, is, is questionable now. And how about things like Ethereum, where you're renting the network by... I, think that the, the, I, I classify that as a... I classify that as a utility token. Yeah. As long as this coins stay within the network and they do not contaminate the currencies, I think it's okay. I think the challenge is when this 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 uh, coins has its life of its own, which goes outside the network and become a speculative asset. As long as you are buying Ethereum and this, they're being used for driving application development. You know, all the gas fee for doing your real work, it is okay. The challenge is what happens beyond that. I think that's where the issue has been till now. So let's dig into stable coins mm -hmm. and CBDCs. So obviously, people want regulated stable coins just because there's so much uncertainty around some of the mm -hmm. stable coins out there. And you've been, you know, a huge driver behind the CBDC. Uh, you know, global initiative. Mm -hmm. So catch us up with where you think everybody is with CBDCs, and then we'll use that as a stepping off point into India in a minute. Yes, sure, absolutely. Uh, well, CBDC, as you know, uh, we have this two clear cut bucket. There's this uh, wholesale CBDC, uh, which is kind of a uh, an efficiency uh, infrastructure, uh, along with a payment infrastructure uh, for for cross-border settlement, I think uh, N BIS uh, has done enough, many experiment, I would say in many countries. In fact, uh, uh, most of the major mainstream uh, econ economy has have now experimented with the wholesale piece and they have put reports uh, and demonstrated successful uh, possible uh, future infrastructure which will run on wholesale CBDC, especially for cross-border payment settlement. Um, BIS has its own project, uh, which they're looking at um, the whole uh, uh, multi-jurisdiction uh, uh, MCBDC uh, uh, kind of product uh, architecture. If multiple central banks have to participate uh, using CBDC as a way to uh, settle cross-border payments between different countries. Um, so that's where wholesale CBDC has gone. Uh, on the retail CBDC, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, just uh, one quick question about the wholesale. How far away do you think we are before we launch some global initial initiative so we can do this, you know, wholesale hmm. settlements and payments? I would, I would say from an experiment perspective, it has 
kind of everybody has run through that course. I think there is nothing left uh, in public space between central banks and technology and experiment where we got to do more experiment. I think that phase is done. Hey, visionaries. Thank you for tuning in. For more free crypto content like this, head over to realvision.com forward slash crypto. You'll get early access to the most brilliant minds in the space to cut through the noise, get in-depth analysis, and get you ahead of the curve with unbiased insights.